you want some good overhead shoulder range of motion, stick around, because I got a guy right here who's got some stiff shoulders, and we're gonna help him open up today. So you've been working on some of this stuff, and Kevin wants to do a handstand. That's his ultimate goal, and he needs open shoulders to do so. So in this video, we're talking about the concepts that he's been using to open his shoulders. So stick around till the end to get all of the goodness. So let's first talk about a well-performed shoulder overhead position. The first thing is that the spine needs to keep its shape. And the natural shape in the spine is flexion in the thoracic spine and a little extension in the lumbar spine. And the second piece is that the shoulder blades need to move. We often think about the shoulder as just the shoulder joint, but you have these big old shoulder blades on the back that are responsible for a lot of shoulder movement. So the specific shoulder blade movement we need is elevation and upward rotation. Elevation is when the shoulder blades move directly upward. So here you can see that I'm going up, 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 and then I'm letting them sink down. This is where we don't want them. This is where we do want them. The more you can elevate your shoulder blades, the more space you can create to get overhead range of motion. Upward rotation is when the shoulder blades literally rotate upward going up into your armpit. Here I'm showing where the bottom tip of the scapula is. This is where it is when you start, and this is where it is when you end. So what's happening is your scapula is rotating upward as you do this movement. And similar to elevation, you need upward rotation to create space in your shoulders to feel good overhead. So for someone like Kevin who has stiff overhead flexibility, he's gonna probably fault on some of these things, if not all of them. So Kevin, go ahead and reach up as high as you can. So what we get when he does this, notice how his belly pokes out. He's arching his back and he isn't getting too much shoulder blade movement. He's getting a little bit, which is good. So Kevin does fall on the things we're talking about, how when he reaches over his head, his spine arches a bunch. He doesn't keep his normal shoulder position and his shoulder blades don't move enough. And that's probably the one of the key reasons that he can't get overhead. So how do we improve this? Well, it's a complex puzzle and also a pretty simple puzzle. We know what we need to accomplish and we can really just use two movements to accomplish this. The movements are the same position, just flipped upside down from each other. The first movement is the passive hang. The reason we like the passive hang is because it puts you in the overhead position and it pulls your shoulder blades upward. All right, so Kevin, show us your passive hang. Go ahead and put your arms up there. From here, you can see he's getting into an overhead position, but his scaps are still sitting a bit low. Now, Kevin, drop into the passive hang, and we can watch what happens to his shoulder blades. They start pulling upward. Now he's gonna try to relax everything and make it a stretch. Kevin, do you feel a stretch? Yeah. Where do you feel a stretch? Mostly in my pecs, but also in my armpit. Yeah, pecs and armpit. So he's just trying to relax. He's trying to let his arms pull him upward with the rest of his body. He's trying to let it sink downward. Now, one of the key problems that we're facing is his shoulder blades are up, but his spine is not in a good position. See how his ribs are poking out? So what we're gonna have Kevin do is we're gonna make him do a strong exhale. Exhale everything out. Everything, everything, everything. Notice how his ribs pull down when he does that. And do you have a better stretch? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably a lot more intense. So he's gonna inhale and then exhale and push everything out and his ribs are gonna disappear. And you can even see how much of a stretch that puts him on and his shoulder position. So what you're gonna find in the passive hang if you do it correctly is that you're gonna get a stretch 
wherever you're tight, you felt a really good stretch, right? Yeah. Where did you feel it? All across here, up in here, and after the exhale, even in my ribs. Right, so he's got tight pecs, he's got tight lats, he's even tight in the muscles of his ribs. So wherever you're stiff, you're gonna feel it the most. So the passive hang is the stretch that we can use to open the shoulders. But now we need to talk about the strength because that's the other side of things that's gonna help you open your shoulders. So Kevin, what have you been working on to build strength in the overhead position? Wall facing handstands. <laughs> He's been working on handstands. Handstands are one of the best ways to work on this. And here's why. When we do a handstand, we're trying to create the same exact position as the passive hang, except instead of being pulled into the position, we have to create the position. So let's get into how to properly do the handstand to open your shoulders. All right, so Kevin, you ready to show us your handstand work? Let's do it. So he's gonna put his hands down and he's gonna place one foot on the wall. And then he gets to walk his feet up the wall, moving his hands closer. Go ahead, all the way. Cool. Now from here you can see that Kevin is sinking into his shoulder blades. Now he's gonna press his shoulder blades away. Press, 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 press. Good, he's reaching his shoulders down into the ground. So he's reaching his shoulder blades this way as he reaches his butt and his feet up to the sky. Now, Kevin, press. Yes, so that little difference is what we're looking for when we do this movement. Sink and press. And one more time. Sink, press. Good, so when we do this movement, we just wanna press the whole time. You might find yourself sinking into your shoulder blades, and if you feel that, then press away. But you wanna stay in that pressed position as long as you can, because that's what's building strength for you in your shoulders, in your overhead position. Now I know a handstand isn't accessible to everybody, so you can do a pike handstand instead. You're gonna use a couch, a bench, whatever you got. Put your feet on it and practice pushing away, just like we practiced there. If that's too hard, come back to push-up position. You can do the same thing. Practice pressing away and just holding the press as long as you can. For both the hang and the wall handstand, you wanna start around 20, 30 seconds, maybe even less. Find what you can do that's intense for you and work that up five seconds per week. Try to get yourself up to 40 seconds, 50, 60 seconds, and that should do it for you. Now I wanted to show you some of Kevin's progress and I'm sorry this isn't the most beautiful picture. <laughs> I'm a bit of a novice on all this stuff, but we get the job done. So on the left here, is Kevin when he started. Now look at his shoulder angle here. He's not far past 90 degrees, right? And you can see his ear hit most of his head. Also notice how much his ribs are poking out. Now this picture was taken when we shot our video. Notice his shoulder angle is opened a bit more you don't see his ear, you can see his nose and his face popping through. Also notice how little his ribs are poking out compared to this picture. So uh, he has a sh better shoulder position and it's actually way better than it even looks because in the, in the before picture, he's cheating a lot. So Kevin has worked on hanging, he's worked on handstands, and he's also worked on other stretches and exercises. So yes, there is more, there's definitely more you can do. But to be honest, if you just do these two, you can get a lot of results. So thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I hope this deep dive was helpful for you. Nice, dude. Hell yeah, open shoulders. Woo! Open shoulders.